praise the Lord, I came up by myself today. <laughs> no more. Praise the Lord. Isn't that great? I came and practiced a couple days just going up and down the steps real fast. But I'll never run like uh, some of those guys do and come up. But it's so good to be here today. We had the most wonderful Sunday school class. And God was with us. You know, early service sounds so good when if you get a chance to come in at 830 when they're having the work the early service. It sounds so precious to be out in the halls or somewhere and hear the singing and the preaching. And we were going to Sunday school class and then we got in the class and studied the Word of God. You know, there is such a good meal, a wholesome meal here at this church when you come. You get fed. Your spirit man gets fed. That's what you need is the fellowship and the Word of God and the moving of the Holy Ghost and prayers answered. So that's what we do here at Stratford Heights. Our name is known all over this area for people that pray. And they think we have the praying as pastor. We do. We have the praying as pastor. We studied about that today. How important it is for the leaders to pray. And our leader prays. He sets a good example for us. You may be seated for just a moment. I have two or three announcements I need to make. You know, uh, spring is going to be here Friday, and we're getting ready for the Easter program. Please avail yourself of this nice little card to take out, and on the back it has the times and the directions to get to the church. Take these and hand them out to people that maybe you want to invite to your church or somebody that doesn't have a home church. Take that and be a missionary and be a minister with this little card and pray over it. Just get you a handful and pray, Lord, you got and direct me to people that need you and let me give this card out to someone because they put a lot of work and effort to get ready and pray and fast and seek the Lord to be able to present this Easter message so that people's hearts will be touched. And uh, so please remember that. And I want to help Missy out today. You have a beautiful flyer in your bulletin. You all see it if you got the bulletin. And we're doing an outreach for the community. And uh, twice a year we do that. Uh, The Easter egg hunt is one of them. There are just hundreds and hundreds of people that come and bring their children to our egg hunt. And we need 30,000 pieces of candy to put in these shells that we have. We have the, already have the plastic shells. And you can do that by just going to some of the stores where they have the candy on sale and uh, ask the Lord to make you a blessing. How many of you want to be a blessing? Let me see your hand. Then buy a bag of candy and bring to Missy. She just sweats bullets almost. No, that's exaggeration. I shouldn't say that. But she sweats a lot because she's worried that she won't have enough candy, but she prays about it, and I know her faith will always reward her. So you plan and bring candy, get it and bring it to the foyer, and the ushers, they'll help you get it to the right place. And you want to be a blessing, don't you? I see that on your faces and the expression in your eyes. You want to be a blessing, so you're in the right church today to be a blessing, all right? You want to do that? Yeah, I want you to. And please remember, if you're new and visiting with us today, uh, we have a meet and greet following our morning service right over to your left and my right out that door to the choir room we have some refreshments and we would like for you to come by we'd like to meet you shake your hand and look you in the face and greet you because you're coming here and we don't know you and we want to get acquainted so you help us do that will you now we want to let all of our members and regular attenders stand at this time leaving our guests seated would you just stay seated if you're new and we want to <laughs> We're going to, uh, gr- we want to greet all of you, and if you're here and you're new, we want to shake hands with you. So look around, find the people that are still seated, and now you can get up, and we'll greet you and uh, give everybody a warm welcome today. Will you do that? God bless you. Thank you.
Hallelujah. Glory. Hallelujah. How many of you are free this morning? If you're free, I want to hear you. Are you free? If you're not, you're getting ready to get free. <laughs> This morning, the Lord spoke and said, in this service, we're going to sing to addictions. There are some of you here this morning, and you're just bound up. God has set you free. All you have to do is accept that. <laughs> I love you, Lord. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make you, what can make you whole again? Nothing but the blood.
Nothing but the blood, nothing but the blood. His blood was shed for us that we might be saved. His body was broken that we might be healed and delivered and set free. Many, many times people are healed when they partake of the communion. Not only has their soul been saved and healed, but their body gets healed. So you should, if you have a special need physically, you should let your faith build today to know that God sees and is aware of our taking of this communion to remember Him and to uh, honor Him for what He has done for us. In 1 Corinthians, in the New Living Bible says, For I want to pass on to you, this is what Paul said, I want to pass on to you what I received from the Lord Himself. On the night when He was betrayed, the Lord Jesus took some bread and gave thanks to God for it. We're going to pray over these elements and ask God to touch them as we partake of them and receive what He wants us to receive today. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending your Son, Jesus, to die on the cross for our sins. And we do this today to remember how His body was broken, how He suffered without the gate, and how His body was pierced. And by His stripes, His, Your Word tells us that we are healed. And we receive of You today, Lord Jesus, being obedient to Your command as we partake of this, that You be glorified and that the needs of Your people will be met. Thank You for these elements today, Lord Jesus, and what they represent, Your blood that's represented by this fruit of the vine today that we partake of. Thank you for it in Jesus' name. So when he had given thanks, he took the bread and he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this to remember me. Take the bread and eat and remember him. In the same way, he took the cup of wine after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant between God and his people, an agreement confirmed with my blood. Do this to remember me as oft as you drink it. For every time you eat this bread and drink this cup, you're announcing the Lord's death until he comes again. Take the cup and let's drink of the blood. of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. Remain standing and continue to worship the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing but the blood Just take a moment and worship Silent as he stood up 
sin has no hold on me. Who the sun sets free, he is free indeed. Now my dead is paid.
Where the 
Spirit of the Lord is. Where the Spirit of the Lord is. There is You know, we ought not be surprised when the Lord begins to move in a service like He's doing now. All throughout the Scripture, we're given one instance, one illustration after another where Jesus has intervened in a miraculous way. Well, I believe there's people in here today that can be healed of any disease. 
I believe that people in here can be delivered as we've been praying and trusting God. I believe that the Lord can meet you right where you are. I want you, if you will, to put your hand on your own heart this morning. I'm believing God to touch you right where you stand. Would you do that? Would you pray for yourself? I believe the Holy Spirit's here to strengthen, to heal, to deliver, and to give you the very, very favor of God that you desire. I believe in the name of Jesus. Let's pray right now. Father, as we come before you, we thank you that we can bring every care. You said cast all of our care on you. We believe this morning. We thank you, Father, that your work will be done and accomplished in our lives. Touch our families. Touch and minister, God, ordering our steps that your work will be done. We believe you today for healing. We believe you today for provision. We believe you for blessing, for your reconciliation at work in marriages and in families and in lives. We give you the honor. We give you the praise for it's not by might nor by power, but by the Spirit of the Lord that we pray all of these things, all power in the name of Jesus Christ. And everyone together said amen and amen and amen. Give the Lord great praise. Come on, let's ring the house with praise to the Lord. Amen. Somebody says, what some of those people praying about down there? Well, some were praying over cancer. Maybe that hadn't come to your house yet. Some were praying over very serious situations, over families and divorces and reconciliation that's needed. You don't always know what your brother or your sister's going through, amen? But we know that he said to bring it all, not just some, but all of it to him and in the old testament we're, we're reminded the question is is there anything too hard for god nothing say that with me nothing say it again nothing is impossible with god one more time give the lord great praise in the house amen before you're before you're seated this morning before you're seated this morning, we want to go to prayer as a, as a congregation. The Bible says that we seek the good of Israel. How many of you know that all throughout the news right now, it just seems like every time we turn it on, there's something new, something happening. It is the church's responsibility. I don't want to act like a politician right now. I'm not seeking your vote. But it is the church's responsibility to uphold the arms of Israel. If you agree with me, say amen. amen. They that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed, but abideth forever. As the mountains are round about Jerusalem, so the Lord is round about his people from henceforth even forever. For the rod of the wicked shall not rest upon the lot of the righteous, lest the righteous put forth their hands unto iniquity. Do good, O Lord, unto those that be good, and to them that are upright in their hearts. As for such as turn aside unto their crooked ways, the Lord shall lead them forth with the workers of iniquity. But peace shall be upon Israel. I like that part in first, that first verse in Psalm 125 when it says, they that trust in the Lord shall be as Mount Zion, which cannot be removed. Enemies may be all around her, and they may all be all around you. But you belong to an almighty, powerful God. You belong to a God who is able to do anything. And as we trust in Him today, as I said, it is our responsibility. It's our responsibility to pray for families who live in fear. You don't know what that's like. You're blessed. Thank you. You're blessed. You have no idea what it's like to worry about your children, whether they'll be in their beds when you wake up in the morning, although we have some of those issues in our country. But to live in a place where it is under constant attack and threat, not because you have a lot of money, not because you're affluent and have a big position, simply because you name the name of Christ. 
It's right for us to pray. It's our responsibility. So would you help me now as we pray? I want to pray for Israel. But in that prayer, I also want to pray for the United States. I want to pray that we will not detour. I have been so proud of who we have been through generations as America has stood with Israel. I have been so proud. I pray today for our leaders. I pray that they will have the mind of the people. I still believe in God bless America. And I still believe that the people of America love and support the state of Israel. There's a few voices trying to speak for all of us, but I want you right now to help me by, pray, by letting your voice be known as we pray for Israel and our country and our leaders. Would you do that with me right now? Father, as we come before you, we ask you to touch the state of Israel. We ask you, Father, to protect her borders, protect her sons and daughters in uniform, in military. And God, protect moms and dads who lay awake at night worrying and stressful over all of their children. I pray, Father, for Christians who live in Iran, in Iraq. I pray, God, all throughout the Mideast, Syria, all the different countries where they're being attacked and kidnapped today. Lord, we see these things, and we know it's a sign of the end times as never before. We pray and believe right now our responsibility is to plead the blood of Christ over every Christian who names the name of Christ. Lord, we pray your protection, a hedge of protection. We rebuke the enemy. We plead the very blood of Jesus Christ over them and pray, God, your protection, your power, your deliverance, your favor. And we pray that you order their steps. For we know, though the enemies are round about them, more before them than who are against them. Because we know in our God, you are the mighty and great powerful deliverer. We also pray for America. We pray for our leaders. Lord, they may think they're making their own decisions, but I pray that you will lead them. I pray that you will guide them, direct our people and our, our government nationality uh, offices, those folks in charge. Lord, let your work and your mind and your heart be in their lives and in their decisions. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus, realizing, Lord, that all must bow to submission to your will. And that, Lord, we seek only your plan, your design for the end time. And we know that, God, you are in control. In the mighty, mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray it. And everyone agreed and said, Amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. How many of you believe with me that it is a, it is a time now where we need to be, as they said, as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the coming of the Lord. We need to be alert. Three people agreed. We need to be alert. The Bible says sober. That means not distracted, not just by alcohol, but by all of the distractions of this world. We need to not be distracted. The church needs to be aware of our responsibilities. You've heard that now five times I've said that word this morning. We need to be alert, aware, for our enemy is in his last hours. He's pulling every evil scheme and device he can out of his bags. He is going to attack your family. Hello. He is going to attack your work and your ministry. He is going to attack your sons and your daughters. He's going to attack. He's going to attack the church. He's going to attack the preachers, the ministries. He's going to make every effort to shut up and to close down the prayers that go before God. But I want us to be more determined than ever before that though they may take away our positions, they may take away our prayer in school, they may take away all of our rights, but we will stand and we will stay, we will say, though they all turn against us, though they take it all away from us, the one thing they can't do is take my mind and my heart. I will pray until he comes and I will always, always stand with Israel. Don't forget this. This is a strategic time in the ministry. And it's a strategic time in the church. This is not business as usual, but we are in very, very evil days. Can you say amen? But with that comes, he said, where sin doth abound, grace does much more abound. I'm telling you, we 
have got the favor and the blessing of the healing he said in the last days I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh my sons and my daughters they shall prophesy they shall all be used in the kingdom old men and young men visions dreams just because the enemy is on his last rampage doesn't mean God still isn't in control amen we want to pray if you've seen this big empty hole over here we have over a hundred people gone to Winterfest this weekend and I want to tell you they I if I got one text I got 25 I got pictures I got all kinds of stuff last night they said the Holy Spirit fell in that that Thompson bowling arena down in Knoxville 22,000 kids and said the power of God fell on all of those kids and they were filled with the Holy Ghost and they were they, all many of them were saved and touched and God is blessing them they said so, even some of our hard-nosed kids uh-huh you know who they are no they said uh, and I'm just playing they're all precious but even the ones that you don't ever really see any kind of desire any kind of real hunger said all of them all of them were laid out just crying and praising God they were with their hands up in the air said the powerful words the planet shakers were there last night they are phenomenal I, I encourage you if you like real good anointed praise and worship music that makes you want to jump and dance listen to planet shakers they shake the planet okay moving on but I'm so proud of them let's continue to pray for them as they come home this afternoon they'll be getting in late this evening and we want to keep them in our prayers so proud of Cameron so proud of he and Whitney and the work they're doing with our kids and uh, oh we, we just got a whole pile of them down there so we're real proud of them and uh, we want to keep them in our prayers also I want to take the time just for a moment to, to look at my friend coach Brian Bales and say congratulations sir <laughs> unbelievable Brian, would you and Jamie and Tinsley please stand up? I want the church to know who we're talking about. Come on, Jamie. She hates this. <laughs> All right. We are so proud of you. District champs, Franklin High School basketball. Brian's the athletic director at Franklin High School. And uh, he and Josh Long. Where's Josh? Josh is here. Josh is the band director. Stand up, Josh. We got Franklin covered today. We'll, we'll, we'll pick on Franklin. This is, a, this is a subtle takeover of the entire school, you see. That's what our plan is. But we're just so proud of them. I, over 100 people from Stratford Heights were there at the game Friday night. You know, it's not just business as usual. This guy with this team is literally taking the world by storm. They've entered this, with a, is it called the Sweet 16 now? Do you know what, where you rank in high school basketball in the country? 23, number 23 in the country. Do you know how many thousands of uh, other high school basketball teams there are? We're just so proud of them. If I were to list all of the awards, all of the certificates, all of the mentions on ESPN, and I'm telling you, they, the world knows. I'm listening to the radio the other night, just the radio, and the two broadcasters are on there fussing back and forth about Luke Kennard and how he is going to win Friday night for Franklin. And I'll tell you, what I've noticed about that team is that it's not just one player, as good as he is. And he is an upstanding, wonderful young man who I know personally. And he is just a tremendous Christian young man. But I want to tell you what, it's a team. Evan Crow is part of that team from our church. They're not here today, are they? But well, we honor him anyway. Let him know we did. Evan's on that team, and we're so proud of them and all that they're doing. And we just, we just love it. We can't wait to say, well, Brian now you've won state we can't wait for that to happen so we'll be we'll be acknowledging that again this morning as our ushers are coming to prepare you I would want to make mention that in a couple of weeks as Liz mentioned we've got an egg hunt an Easter egg hunt now in our morning offerings normally the loose offering always goes to world missions around the world different places today I want us to receive the offering for Middletown for our own community. How many thinks it's all right that we're a part of the world too? So all the loose offering today is going to go to help us as we get ready with those 30,000 pieces of candy that we need. 
and the many different other ministry items that they'll need for the one of the biggest Easter egg hunts in the city that will happen happens right here if you come out on that day you'll see I don't know they said almost 2,000 they're expecting 3,000 this year that'll be just for the Easter egg hunt I never really liked eggs that much but you know if they're that good I might need to come try them but we're, we're excited because so many kids and so many families come on our property come on our campus and you know what it says it sends a message to our community and it tells them number one that we care about them we love them that we invite them to our campus and that we want to give to them something you know that's the very things we want them to feel from us because we also want them to know that we love them in the Lord that we have something we want to give to them and that is the message of Jesus Christ as their Lord who died on the cross for them so we want to send those positive wonderful messages to our community and this is our opportunity one of our other opportunities to do that we try very hard throughout the year to do several events like this but this is one that's coming up so I want you to give today I'm reading a book by Mark Batterson I I recommend it highly if you've not read it it's called all in one of the best books I've read read in a long time and I want I want that to be the story of my life all in God I don't want to do anything with half of a heart I don't want to do anything just to do it just to go through the motions I am a, I am one of these people that I'm impassioned. I, I feel things. You know, when I'm at the game the other night, the, the people sitting with me were absolutely embarrassed. I mean, I make no, I don't apologize for it. I jump up, I scream, I holler, my hands are up in the air. I go nuts, my heart rate, I thankfully have a Fitbit now, and my heart rate went up to 123 while I was there at the game. And I was just excited and I love it. I'm all in. That's the way you win games. That's the way you win in life. That's the way you win when you're serving the Lord. Because people look at us, and when they see us, they're looking not for people who name the name of Christ. They're looking for people who really believe it. Who really believe it. And they live it out. You know, anyone who knows me knows this. You know, someone asked me, well, what does it take to be used at Stratford Heights? I said, be real. Be real. And be faithful. If you're not faithful, I don't use you. I mean, people have come to me before and they said, well, I do everything just perfect. I said, but you're never here. Faithful is number one on my list. Besides being real, that's number one. Faithful number two. Being all in. Being all in. A missionary was flying to a jungle and he was going to minister in a little community of headhunters. This is a true story. It's not a made-up story. He literally had heard the message was that every missionary before him had been, had been killed, heads cut off. And he felt a direct call of God to go to this little village in Africa. So he said, I'm going to go. And so when he prayed about it, the Lord directed him that he needed to pack up all of his belongings in a coffin. And he shipped all of his belongings over in a coffin. And when he got there, he got into the village. They dropped that coffin right in the middle of the village. And he looked at the people and he said, I'm here. And the only way I'm going out is in this box. All my worldly possessions are in this box. And don't you know that man, he shocked them. Apparently, God used that. They never heard him. He stayed there 40-some years. And when he died on the epitaph of his tombstone, they wrote this at the bottom. They said, when he came, there was no light. And when he left, there was no darkness. And you know how he left? He left in that coffin. That's all in. That's all in. That's what I want. That's what you need. If you're wondering, how do we touch God? How do we get God involved in our situation? All in. All in. That's how you know. That's how you see. That's how you experience. If you are half a foot in, half a foot out, I can tell you right now, your experience is going to be hardly nothing. They that sow will reap.
with the measure wherewith you sow, so shall you also reap. So I'm asking you today to give, but this is much more, as you see, it's a message. It's much more than just in giving. If you're in financial troubles today, I'd be finding a way to pay my tithe. If you're having difficulties at home, do the thing. Find a way to be all in on the very thing that you need God to do. There's a big message in there. I'm going to save it for another day. Father, as we come before you, we thank you for the privilege, the opportunity that we have. I always see it as an honor to be able to give in your house. And Lord, to be able to give today, especially to the mission of Middletown, to our egg hunt. I pray that you will minister, Lord, to the leaders and those involved who will be in charge. And God, that you make it one of the biggest events and greatest events, showing love, passion, showing servanthood, and showing Christ to the Middletown community. Use us, Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus. And Lord, I thank you for those who are faithful in this church to pay their tithe. They've chosen here. You've called them here. However their life has brought them to this church, they're here and they're all in. I thank you for them. They're the ones who will help us as we continue to carve out a place in the history of this community for the Stratford Heights Church of God, dating clear back to 1915. Thank you for those people who are called to be here. We give you honor and praise for every need being met, not only in their lives, but in ours as a ministry and as a church. We pray it all in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's already been won. I am redeemed. You said. Shake 
take off these heavy chains. Wipe away every stain because I'm not who I used to be. I am redeemed. You said be free. So I'll shake off these heavy chains. Wipe away every stain because I'm not who I used to be. Oh God. 